The French Alps are nothing short of picturesque, with vast mountains and deep valleys spanning across approximately 750 miles. Many enjoy the alpine slopes during the winter months, skiing and snowboarding, with hikers, rock climbers and mountaineers alike enjoying the scenery during the warmer summer months. Despite the mountain range being one that many love to venture, it has been the location of many tragic and bewildering events, one of which took place in the early summer of 2023, when a young boy mysteriously vanished from his grandparents' home without a trace. Emile Soleil is a two-and-a-half-year-old boy from La Bouillardise in the Boucha du Rhône, a commune located approximately 21 kilometres from Marseille in the south of France. He lived with his parents, his father, Columban Soleil, who is a 26-year-old engineering student, his mother, 25-year-old Marie Vedavini, and his infant sister, not much is known about Emile, but his mother told the media that he, quote, loved to chase butterflies. A neighbour also told the media that Emile's family were, quote, close-knit, good people who were active members of the community, discreet, very religious and observant, with an exemplary education. Similar anecdotes were echoed in what others had to say about the Soleils, who were by all accounts happy, loving and very dedicated to their faith. Columban and Marie were specifically members of the Catholic movement Chrétienté Solidarité and were known to regularly attend Mass and sing Latin hymns. On the afternoon of Saturday, July the 8th of 2023, little Emile spent some time at his maternal grandparents' residence in the idyllic alpine hamlet of Auvernay, located approximately two kilometres from the village of Vernay in the Alpa du Alta Provence. Emile's grandparents were babysitting him for the summer holidays at the time, and on that particular weekend, they were having a family reunion. A number of Emile's aunts, uncles and cousins were also present at the house that day, around 10 of them. The family was quite large and many of Emile's aunts and uncles were actually not much older than he was. During that afternoon, two-year-old Emile had a short nap before he decided to play in the garden, but after some time at approximately 5.15pm, his grandparents grew concerned when they couldn't locate him. His grandparents allegedly had plans for that evening, an excursion of some description, and just as they were packing up their car to leave the house, they realised that Emile was missing. Despite his age, it was known that Soleil was rather good at walking and could have walked for quite some distance. It was possible that he may have hidden somewhere or perhaps wandered off and gotten lost, but there was also the possibility that he may have been hurt, perhaps having fallen into a small valley or a stream. But there was also a cliff not too far from the residence where it was also possible that Emile had gone, but there was no way of knowing at this time. His grandparents looked everywhere they could, but despite this, they couldn't find their grandson. At 6.40pm that Saturday night, a search for the little boy was subsequently launched by French authorities, where they mobilised a total of three mountain gendarmerie platoons, a group of renowned Saint-Hubert sniffer dogs with two canine units and two helicopters. Emile's mother's voice was broadcast over loudspeaker from the aircraft during the search in order to reassure him if he was hiding somewhere or had gotten lost, in the hopes that doing so would coax him out, but without success. The helicopters, as well as a number of drones, used thermal imaging in an effort to locate the missing toddler, but despite their best efforts, even thoroughly combing the cliff area near to the grandparents' residence and searching every single vehicle and house within the vicinity, including two of which were left abandoned, no trace of a meal was found. 
A trace of blood was found on a car, but further forensic analysis confirmed it to be of animal origins, likely a wolf or a stray dog or a bird of prey. Emile's parents and grandparents, as well as search and rescue teams and volunteer firefighters, not to mention the entire village of Vernay, which housed about 125 residents, many people from nearby towns and villages, tourists and some members of a hiking club, all went out to look for a mule across the steep mountainous terrain, day and night, but unfortunately to no avail. Over the course of the initial five-day search, which spanned across a five-kilometre radius, hundreds upon hundreds of people were involved, with a total of 800 people alone being involved in grid searches, which had been conducted over a 48-hour period. There was a cabin downstream not too far from the grandparents' residence that was searched, the cabin having been a place Emil loved to visit, as he had actually built it with his aunts and uncles, most of whom were teenagers and children. A hut up the slopes near to a precarious cliff edge where local children liked to play was also searched. A wash house where sniffer dogs appeared to be drawn to was also scoured extensively, but once again, rather disappointingly, nothing of any significance was found in any of these locations. The town effectively went into a lockdown of sorts during the initial days of searching and in the weeks that followed to avoid quote-unquote malicious tourism, the prohibition order being enforced throughout July and August by the mayor in order to protect the residents, Emil's family and the integrity of the investigation. Only primary and secondary residents and searching officials were granted access to the area during this period, and also of note, agricultural work taking place in the area had to come to a standstill, in case they accidentally and unknowingly destroyed any potential evidence. The mayor of the town wanted the locals to be able to live quietly and not to be swamped by media and nosy holidaymakers, but even after this period of prohibition had ended, locals and journalists clashed as the media swarmed to the village to report on little Emile's disappearance. At this time, it was reported that several of the locals felt that their village was cursed, as a number of tragedies had already occurred in Le Vernay, including the murder of a local cafe owner in 2008 and a German Wings aircraft crash in 2015, which killed all 150 people on board. The locals very much felt that they lived in a, quote, village of the damned, especially with Emile's disappearance adding to an extensive dark history. Meanwhile, Emile's grandparents released a statement to the media, speaking of their great concern for their missing grandson, a concern which understandably grew as time passed with no trace of him. His parents and his grandparents are devout Catholics, and they asked the public to pray for Emile's safe return. His disappearance didn't just affect those in Vernay itself, but back in his hometown of La Bouillardise, where the words, quote, for little Emile and his family were affixed to the altar of the church. The family were very much in their hometown's thoughts and prayers. Back in Vernay, because the search dog operation failed to find anything of significance, which was mirrored by the lack of leads found by investigators, it was decided that police needed to expand their search efforts. Something which disturbed a dog training expert who was questioned about the case was the fact that the Saint-Hubert sniffer dogs, also commonly referred to as bloodhounds, didn't find a single trace of the missing boy. Especially given such a small search area, this was extremely unusual. Even if Emile had fallen into a hole or a crevice somewhere, the dogs would have found at least the entrance. But they found nothing. Stéphane Renault, the dog training expert, told BFM TV that, quote, if he, the dog, ever smells the child, Emile, whether he is dead or alive for less than four days, the dog will still find him. 
Technical and scientific police operations were also conducted under the veil of darkness to try and detect traces of blood on the roads in and out of Auvergne, but without success. Around this time, a call was also made by the public prosecutor for any witnesses to come forward who may have seen Emile on the day he was last seen, with many fearful that the two-year-old boy had possibly been abducted. There was no evidence to indicate this, however, but there was nothing at all to indicate what fate befell him at all. No clues whatsoever were found, but following their appeal for witnesses, over 1,400 tips came in. In a press briefing the following evening, the prosecutor announced that two witnesses had come forward, neighbours who had claimed to have seen Emil leaving his grandparents' home on the day he vanished, walking approximately 10 metres downhill along an alleyway, before they lost sight of him. Whether he was alone or with anybody else remains unclear, though these testimonies do suggest that he was by himself. We don't know what Emile's demeanour was, whether he was happy or playful, scared or fearful. We simply don't know, therefore we cannot determine if he was in any immediate danger. Over the days that followed, many questioned why these neighbours didn't intervene. A two-year-old boy was walking by himself. Normally, if you were to see a child walking alone, you would look for any sign of a parent or a guardian nearby, or you would approach them and ask them if everything was okay. Worst case scenario, if there was nobody around, perhaps they got separated from their parents, you would take them to a police station where they could be kept safe until they were reunited with them. But the bottom line is, you would never leave a two-year-old child alone, especially in an area like the Alps, where it's easy to get disorientated or get into a dangerous situation due to the rugged terrain. However, in this case, it was actually very common for children to meet in the street to play, and due to the cul-de-sac nature of Vernay and the 15 or so houses located side by side, it was not an uncommon sight to see children walk to and from their homes alone to play with other children, as the locality very much had a village square atmosphere. French authorities did not lean towards any particular theory at this point, such as kidnapping, though they kept their options open and wanted to explore whatever avenues of inquiry that they could. Rémy Avon, the prosecutor of the Republic of digne le bain told the media that, quote, all hypotheses remain topical, none is privileged and none is excluded. Avon did say to the media on the fourth day of searching that the gendarmerie and the army were focusing on identifying, quote, possible traces of cigarette butts, traces of textile, traces of blood, squeals, various and varied traces, everything that could be exploited scientifically thereafter. The possibilities of what happened to Emile are endless, especially when lacking any sort of evidence to indicate his fate. Even cell data collected from the area at the time didn't provide investigators with any significant leads, following extensive analysis, involving cross-checking the movements of residents on the day in question with that data. Residents were questioned extensively by the investigators, but nothing of interest came to light. Meanwhile, as the search continued, a heat wave struck the area, which hindered the search quite significantly. After 48 hours had passed without any sign of a meal, Remy Avon told the media, quote, Medically, we are told that beyond a period of 48 hours, given the young age of the child, given his constitution, and considering that a human who would be deprived of food and water by the current high heat, the vital prognosis is very, very life-threatening. Sadly, despite carrying out more targeted searches of the vicinity, the search for Emile Soleil was called off on July 13th, with authorities having found no trace of the two-year-old, despite having searched over 97 hectares with a fine-tooth comb. 
More drones and now cadaver dogs, mainly Malinois and Springer Spaniels, were brought in to search for human remains. But once again, their efforts proved to be fruitless, leading investigators to hitting a brick wall once again. Due to the complexity of the case, a judicial investigation was opened by the research section of the National Gendarmerie of Marseille on July 18th in an effort to determine the cause and circumstances surrounding Emile's disappearance, which remained entirely unclear. As the search came to a close, the Salai family attended mass at the local church, where they sought solace amidst their personal tragedy. It was around this time that speculation and rumours began to swirl regarding Emile's family, possibly having been involved in his disappearance. According to various sources, Emile's father, Columban, had extreme right political views and allegedly had ties to the now debunked far right nationalist group Action Francaise and the neo fascist Bastion Social. And in 2018, he was actually arrested for quote unquote an attack on dark skinned foreigners, which was linked to these particular groups. He appeared in court, but was released after pledging to keep the peace. It was also alleged that both parents supported the reconquest party of Eric Zemmour, a convicted racist and Islamophobe who ran for French presidency in 2021. Much has been said across the media about Emile's family and their beliefs, but many villagers in Vernay have known Emile's maternal grandparents for over 20 years and stand by the family regardless. His immediate family did not initially speak to the press regarding what had happened, mainly due to the ongoing tensions between residents and journalists, some of whom have been stirring the rumour mill purely to get a headline. It wasn't just journalists, however, who were causing problems. Internet sleuths and psychic mediums alike jumped at the chance to somehow be involved in Emile's case, something which left investigators frustrated and disheartened by such unhelpful interference. Various of these self-proclaimed mediums posted videos across social media, mainly on TikTok, citing their own beliefs from the so-called spirit world, which gained them thousands upon thousands of views. They claimed to feel the boy's presence, to feel and experience what Emil was, that he was thirsty and tired and somehow in pain. These claims caused much more harm than good in an already delicate situation, with many of these mediums being called out for profiting off a little boy's disappearance. Investigators said, quote, We distrust them like the plague. These mediums offer zero credibility, and investigators believe that their comments are simply unhelpful and a waste of time and energy. It is of many a professional and amateur opinion alike that Emil wandered off and got into an accident, which unfortunately resulted in the two-year-old succumbing to the elements of the Alps, but without any sort of evidence or clues, it cannot be said with any certainty. Some theories to have been suggested are that Emil was attacked by a wolf or a vulture, that he was victim to a tragic accident involving a combine harvester in the long grass, or that he was accidentally hit by a car and the driver, panicked, disposed of his body. Despite several theories suggesting it is a possibility, authorities do not believe at this moment in time that any criminality took place, such as abduction linked to political enemies of his parents or a homicide. But once again, Lack of evidence cannot prove that this was the case. Nothing at this point can be ruled out. The mayor of Vernay, Francois Belic, speculated on the case when talking to CN News, theorising that Emile was forcibly removed from the town by at least one adult. Quote, when we see that we have not found Emile in the town, it means that he has necessarily been moved. It cannot be otherwise. He could only have been moved by adults, by one or more adults. 
Either way, we are dealing with a madman, or we are dealing with someone Machiavellian. A spokesperson then said, quote, either the body was concealed after an accident, or it was removed. If it is proven that any criminality took place, Balik promised that those responsible would be punished accordingly. In regards to the judicial investigation, the process of analysing all of the evidence they found, mainly the 1,600 telephone lines in the area and over 500,000 photographs taken during the initial searches, could take several years to go through. Even once the analysis is completed, investigators may not be any closer to finding out the truth as to what happened to little Emil. A few weeks into the investigation, a strange smell fell across the neighbourhood, and many initially believed that it could have been related to Emile's disappearance. However, after looking into it, it turned out to be a fire in the valley, and was completely unrelated to the case. About a month and a half later, at the tail end of August of 2023, the investigation was extended to the charges of, quote, kidnapping, arrest, detention and sequestration of a minor, despite having no further elements to pursue. Doing this allows investigators to carry out police custody measures and possible referrals if required, which is essential in helping the case move forward. The latest update in this case came in September, when it was reported by numerous media outlets that investigators had turned their attention towards a neighbour's house, located a few hundred metres away from the grandparents' residence, where they started digging up a large concrete slab on the property with a jackhammer. The slab had actually been laid during the summer months when Emil had disappeared, and during initial searches, sonar imaging detected an anomaly in the area where this slab had been laid, but rather disappointingly, the anomaly turned out to be a piece of polystyrene. Another avenue of investigation was explored in August, regarding a man who was to be prosecuted for sexual assault of a minor. He went before the prosecutor on August 1st, but a few days later, he took his own life in his family home, which just happened to be in Liverney. Many believed that due to the circumstances involved and this individual's past, that the man could have possibly played a part in Emile's disappearance. However, his cellular data was analysed and it placed him quite some distance away from Vernet on the day the two-year-old boy disappeared. Therefore, he was ruled out. It should be noted that, rather oddly, a few years prior to Emile's disappearance, his maternal great-grandparents' family home in the Famlet of Boulard, just outside of the town of Beaujau, was burnt to the ground whilst vacant, according to the Parisian newspaper. Firing systems were found within the property, suggesting some sort of criminal intent, but despite an investigation into the inferno, which ravaged three properties by the time it was extinguished, no criminal charges have been pressed against anyone. The identity of whoever was responsible for the arson attack remains unknown, and nobody has ever been arrested. Whether Emile's disappearance or his parents' political involvement is linked to the fire also remains a mystery. Emile's parents said in an interview published seven weeks after their son's disappearance, the first time they had publicly spoken out regarding the incident, said that they were, quote, overwhelmed by grief and anguish, but continued to hope. They pray for a miracle, but continue to, quote, trust the work of the gendarme. From the beginning, they have shown great professionalism and empathy. Columban and Marie also expressed their deepest thanks to the French people who helped search for their missing son, whether directly or indirectly, extending their gratitude to all those who have supported them and their family during this extremely difficult time. 
During this interview, they also denounced criticism that they faced from the public and the media, specifically the, quote, malicious testimonies published in the press. Marie said, quote, In the face of the tragedy, we have remained united with our families and friends. We also have the impression that, beyond us, it is our faith that is ridiculed. We are not ashamed to love the traditional mass we attend in our diocese. Some claim that we go to mass several times a day, others that we went quietly to church to pray during the beatings in order to make us look like enlightened people who rely solely on prayer by neglecting action. However, we have given our all on both fronts according to our strengths. They were understandably disappointed to have information about their private lives exposed in the media. However, to them, the only thing that really mattered, despite all of the ridicule that they were facing, was Emil. Their only hope is for their little boy to be found and for him to return home. Emil Solai remains missing and his current whereabouts are unknown. When he vanished in July of 2023, Emil was two and a half years old. He is described as being Caucasian, standing at around three feet tall, with blonde hair and brown eyes. He was last seen wearing a yellow shirt, a pair of white shorts with a green pattern on them, and a pair of hiking shoes. Those with any information regarding this case are urged to contact the Emil Soleil tip line on 0492-367300 or you can email the gendarmerie at disparitionemil04 at gendarmerie.interior.gov.fr.